Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching Out Here in the Redwoods. I'm your host, Denise Riles. And for everyone here, aloha, hello, and goodbye. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You are, we're time zone friendly. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I have with me my dear old friend, whistling a happy tune, Mr. Dave Silverbrand. Aloha, oh, Denise, welcome. I'm so happy to see you again. So, we, Dave, how are you, my good man? You oh, I'm doing fine. And, and part of the reason I'm doing fine is because uh, I know people like you, and I don't mean to sound like I'm patronizing, but it's true, is that whenever I, and I've known you for years and years and years, as you know. Yeah, we've worked together. And you're and always, quote, on, end quote. You've, and you've taught me <laughs> a lot about humor and about drama and about all kinds of things that has really been of great value to me and a lot of things that have happened to me in my life some good not some not so good and so i, I it's a chance to thank you for that you're welcome yeah you're welcome so dave you have been in this community for i don't know how long mm -hmm. and here here's the most mutual appreciation mm -hmm. i got to work on a couple of your plays mm -hmm. that you've written and mm -hmm. that in my meaning gave me some great joy and happiness and the last play we worked on make mine metamucil actually right. got picked up it did it is now a published work and i still get royalties for that from the uh, people who publish it like maybe a dollar and a half every three months or something but that's Good. that'll get you uh three quarters of a cup of coffee these days dollar nice. dollar and a quarter I know, I paid three ninety for my coffee this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so Dave, everybody uh, is wanting to know, you've had a rough year. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about finding your spirituality, trying to find things to hold on to, to help you mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with this and, and coping? Well, that's the best that we could do. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, well, 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 thanks for asking. What I've done, and I, and I can even start from today, Yeah. what I've done is look for uh, the humor in things that I encounter. And a lot of people don't quite understand that because they could say, how can a person laugh when there's so much to be angry about or sad about or uh, vindic vindic vindictive about? Right. right. How can you laugh? Well, laughter is, as you know, is a wonderful, wonderful method of sometimes self-hypnosis, sometimes meditation. It's a very, very spiritual expression. It's good medicine. Yeah. So like this last week, for example, I've been working a lot, a lot, a lot in radio, and it's a very tiring, very stressful thing, and other things going on with my life that have not been the best. And so this morning, I looked down, and somebody said, have you looked at your shoes recently? Because I went to work at 4 o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> and I said, no, I haven't. And they said, well, look. And I looked down, and I had one black shoe and one brown shoe. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> I, isn't it the truth? And I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And I thought, that's funny. But then on the other hand, by golly, the right shoe was on the right foot and the left shoe was on the left foot. Hey, that's I a was good start. there. I was in the ballpark. <laughs> right. I'm so proud of myself for right, that. Right. And of course, for the whole day, and I left them on too. I mean, some people would say, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to go home and put on shoes of the same color, but not me. I did it. And I was, one had a little more sole on it than the other. So I was walking around like this all day long and it was kind of awkward. But by golly, I enjoyed every single mismatched minute of it. Yeah, and every, uh, I love that. Have you written an article on that yet? No, but I'm going to. <laughs> and, and How two shoes changed my life. I'm going to. And, uh, <laughs> and I know you probably know the story. Uh, maybe not, but I, uh, this gives you another example. Is that I've, I've kind of gone with these things that happened to me. It's like when the comedian uh, Martin Short was appearing up at Humboldt State. This was several years ago. And he was doing his uh, Jiminy Glick interviews where he does this very... Uh, oh, right. over the top show busy kind of guy and they wanted a local uh, celebrity so they said we'll get Dave Silverbrand to be the local celebrity oh. so Martin Short was doing this thing and I was gonna be the local celebrity and I had my good blue suit on all dressed up and my 
wife Nina was so proud of me and she picked a really nice tie and a suit and everything and I got up there and I was interviewing him and he looked at me and he saw, he said, oh, you've got a dark blue suit and you've got brown shoes on. The brown shoes don't go with the blue suit. And, of course, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean, who would know outside of the Hollywood circle, you know? I guess not. So I, I was, so everybody was kind of tittering a little bit. <laughs> so then I thought, well, okay. So I took my shoe off, and one of my socks had a hole just about like that in the shoe. And, and of course, or in my, you know, in the sock, obviously. Right, right. And Nina was mortified. And Martin Short was just out of his own shoes with delight that I had given him this straight line. He was so happy, and afterward he said, oh, thank you so much. He was just so <laughs> grateful to me that I had given him this freebie. And, right. you know, for days afterward, people would say, oh, I'll bet you planned that, didn't you? I said, yes. no, I didn't. I just put my best shoes on and my best socks on. Those are my best socks. <laughs> and that's the way it worked out. And... Uh, one of the, the other half of the story is of this last 4th of July, I was down walking through Old Town and visiting with my old friends. One of my old friends was Mark McCulloch, who is Mr. Fish. Right. He was at the Martin Short concert. Okay. And he said, Dave Silverbrand, are you wearing your good socks today? Ha, 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 ha. And I was going to take my shoe off, and wouldn't you know it, I was wearing the same sock had a hole in it. It's the same sock. I've, I've, I mean, they're just, they're great socks. They look like these, except they've got that little gap in them. Right. But nobody knows except me. Right, right. So what the heck? And they're sure enough, socks now. I, I was wearing my Martin short socks. Yeah. I had short socked myself. Right, or short socked yourself. <laughs> you got to put those in a, <laughs> yeah. You there gotta we go. You got to put that in a frame. I know. Short, my short shots. I should put my sock in a frame. That's, that's right. Yeah. With the picture of you yeah. and Martin if you got one. A lot of people tell me, Dave, why don't you just put a sock in it? And I will now. I'm going to do that. That's I'm going to put a sock in it and hang it on the wall. Well, Nina would like that. She would. Yes. She'd be very proud of me. I think How I might she, do that. You bet. How has she changed your life? Oh, because my. Oh, man. You know, because we all, you know, I think of death as going into another way of living, uh -huh. going back home. So with her enjoying a new way of living, how has she helped you with a new way of living? Well, this is and I, and I a say new this, way of living for you right I, now. And I say this uh, with all love and respect. You needed to have a sense of humor to be with her, and she needed to have a sense of humor to be with me. And uh -huh. there were times when we made each other laugh just by sheer, uh, the sheer humor of the two of us. She was a very organized and dear and beautiful and very productive human being, and I learned so much from her. And I was a dingbat. I still am a dingbat, <laughs> a proud dingbat. I'm a card-carrying <laughs> dingbat. I'll show you. I got okay. it with me right now. Okay. And the fact that we were together, it was a, in a lot of ways, it was a total mismatch. People would say, I don't understand it. But on the other hand, I understood it because the two of us were such a mis mismatch that it was perfect. Right. And, uh, and our humor was a perfect match. She would say, we would get into these arguments, and of course I'm so flighty and so weird sometimes. She would just come right up and say, do you have any idea what you're talking about? And I would say, <laughs> give no, it right back to no you. dear, I don't. <laughs> just give it right up. And that's... <laughs> And that's the way it was with us. It was like that. We'd make each other laugh that way. Aww. She would just when I, when I would just cave in and say, "No, honey, I have no idea." And then we would just laugh it off. And that's the way. That's the kind of relationship we had. We needed to have a sense of humor to put up with each other. Right. And it was great. Right. It was a great thing. And so, if I if I could think of any number of things that I learned from her, and there were a lot of things I learned from her, but one of them was to have a sense of humor about things and and then the, the I think the other most important thing that I learned from her was to enjoy every single minute that you have with yourself and with somebody that you love right. because every minute is so valuable and it's uh, it's fleeting and you can never predict how long that time's going to be and you enjoy it and you celebrate it and it's just a beautiful beautiful thing and how how is she helping you today how is that humor helping you today well, it, it, I don't know what I <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what I would do without that humor, uh -huh. because as I said, it's a very 
Uh, it's a spiritual thing, and it comes from a spiritual place. Humor does. It comes from deep within you. And I don't know what I'd do without it. I'm able to laugh about a lot of things that other people wouldn't uh, be able to laugh about. And, and I know this sounds... Uh, you know, the one person other than Nina who I think understood that was uh, the late father, Eric Fried. I think he understood humor the way a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, he, I, I went to the, and I still do, I still go to that church, so I understand something about spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, uh, honestly, to be honest, I'm not sure everybody there does, but I do, and mm -hmm. I know that he did. And I know that one time, for example, because at Easter time they have this uh, uh, kind of a celebration where people are, where the priest washes the feet of several people. Oh it's yeah, Pope Francis of, did that. Every yeah, exactly. Finish. That's exactly yeah. right. He did do that. He's another guy with a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so we were doing that, and I was very. It was a very solemn thing, and everybody was very solemn, and I was sitting up in front, and. Uh, Eric, Father Eric was washing the feet and he got to my foot and he washed my foot and he looked at it and he said, that, he just whispered, he said, that is a big foot. That's a huge foot. He said, he said that's got to be at least a 12. He says, that's got to be a 12. And by golly, it was a 12 and a half. I was so... And, and, but, that's, but that's humor. That's, that's, that's right. humor, and that's, that's, that was the gift that he had, and, and, I, and I appreciated that. I'm not sure everybody does, but I, but I do, mm -hmm. and, and that's, the, that's what helps me through the day as well, mm -hmm. is just to be able to laugh at things. And sometimes, not everybody understands the humor of it, but I understand it, and right, I understand right. that sometimes it will creep in at some of the darkest times of your life, the humor will come in, because it's, there's something... Uh, physiological or something chemical that's happening to your body, it's helping you adjust. Sometimes when you're, when you're too hot, your body cools you down. When you're too cold, your body has a way of regulating, bringing you up. Right, your body right. fights disease in some ways. Right. Your body fights sadness in some ways too, I think, that you're, there's something oh, about- Oh, sure. Yeah. Through the darkness, there is light. Yeah. And nobody's supposed to be down there that long. That's right, that's right. And it's okay to feel it. Yeah. That's. Uh, it's okay to feel it. Everybody, you know, what concerns me sometimes is that doctors give you these medications. Oh, oh you're not tell me about it. But it's okay. And I'm sure you've had your ups and your downs, but it's tell okay me about to it. feel. Exactly. And through that, you kind of, kind of maybe move through. That's right. Find a new understanding. Yeah, that's right. And, and now an example of uh, an experience that you remember very well that we had was we were uh, rehearsing that play make my metamucil right and you re and i was very very nervous about that it was the first time i'd in a long time that i'd written a play and, and, and i was in it. in it and i hadn't planned to be in it <laughs> i was in it and i was scared to death i right. mean i was so nervous and we were getting towards the end of the rehearsal time and this was one of our last dress rehearsals mm -hmm. you remember this it was down at the ferndale theater Repertory, yeah yeah and and so i had one of my big scenes and then i was supposed to walk off mm -hmm. and I was so wound up I did my big scene and I walked off except I ran out of floor <laughs> you walked around the wrong side I walked you fell off the stage I walked off the stage and I landed on my keister on the yep, floor and yep. I'm looking up and everybody's are you okay and I just looked around and of course my backside hurt like heck of course uh, but that and I hate to say it but that was the high point of my performance that night. I don't think so. I don't think so. You had a lot of high points. I know. And everybody really gravitated toward that. And through that, you developed, and so did I, mm -hmm. some friendships that are still going still, after all yeah. of this time. Yeah. And uh, no, that's true. Because uh, my big disappointment is that nobody was there to review that. I know. The fall, because I think it was worth, I think it would have... <laughs> You know, Betty Trouth should have been able to write a line in one of her reviews about my fall because I thought it was masterful. Yeah. It was great. Oh, yeah. In the dark, even. A lot of people <laughs> practice faults like that. <laughs> they do. Jerry Lewis. Right. Dick Van Dyke. Right, right. You know? 
It was it was one of the best. Right. And and yet there was nobody there to see it except us. Exactly. But some of the know, best things are happen during rehearsals. But it's a memory. So now That's right. now I can embellish it. I can say that I didn't just fall, but that I cartwheeled, there or you that go. I. Uh, uh, as the Blue Angels pilots say, I maximum deflection rolled, <laughs> like that. <clears throat> now you've reached out to some of your former cast members. Yes, I have. And how, have, how has that helped you through? Oh, that's helped me a lot because this, this, the great thing about theater or anything else that you do right. is it taps into something different and something new. And uh, you know, that's an interesting, that is an interesting topic because we have our own lives, but then we share a space with other people. And unfortunately, in my from my view, some of the ways that we share space are restricted in ways that makes it harder for us now. Right. And, right. and I, for example, they're now under uh, California labor law, for example. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing that we're protected. We hmm. should be comfortable in the workplace. Yeah, well, absolutely. But now, but it has taken some of the fun out of work and I'm and I say that all with all uh, candor but also in with caution too because a lot of people say well there's certain kinds of humor in the workplace that are yeah. appropriate but on the other hand uh, there is an adventuresome to and an adventure to humor yeah. that is somehow um, taken down a couple of notches because you'd say well can I not uh, like for example, today here again today, there's a young guy that who laughs a lot at my jokes, and that's you know that's something he'll have to bear for the rest of his life. <laughs> Does he, but he'll get through it. Maybe counseling will help him. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, he and I were wearing the same shirt today. The young guy. Oh, so and, you're on the same wavelength. Yeah. Your people called my people. This is Purple Shirt Day. Yeah, and <laughs> and he saw that shirt and he said, uh, he said, now I can tell people that I'm your illegitimate son. <laughs> and I cracked up and I said, you know how many people walking around today who would deny that they are my offspring and you're not <laughs> just owning up to it, you're proud of it. Right. And I'm so proud of you for walking around with my DNA, I can't begin to tell you. <laughs> and, and the two of us just laughed and laughed and laughed. But there was a level of that where I'm thinking, is there somewhere in the rule book that you wouldn't be able to say that in general workplace that somebody was walking around as your? I mean, who knows? Yeah. But so now, so now, every time I see him, I say, "My son." Son, I'm so proud of you, my son. <laughs> it's great. So, what's been the most difficult moment for you within all of this? That is another good question. The most difficult. But moments. you really had to tap into that spirituality. The most difficult, the most difficult <clears throat> moments for me have been when um, I come on times that we used to share. I'm talking about Nina. I'm talking mm -hmm. about yes. Like Fourth of July. Yeah. Is a time that's uh -huh. that until this year. Well, last year was hard, and yeah. they're always and they're hard because you remember things. Um, that happen on those days that, uh -huh. that are truly unique and that you won't, uh, that you don't have again, except in your memory. Right. So that's, that's a tough one. Um, and really, has it been tough because you are well known in this community? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and around here, we like to, you know, make people real. Mm -hmm. You know, did that disturb you a little bit, people coming up to you? You know that you had no idea who they are, and oh, kind of knowing the contrary. your life. No, to the contrary. It it's like it is like the family that you would always want to have. Really, okay. and so I can tell. So I can tell you one story, for example, uh, because she died on May first, two thousand thirteen. Right. And everybody thinks about anniversaries, and so uh, I was I was really nervous about the 2014 May 1st, mm -hmm. what was I gonna do? Right. And I thought about it and thought about it and said, I've gotta, I wanna take control of the situation. That's the number one thing that you gotta do is to take control of your own emotions and mm -hmm. humor helps you do that. Mm -hmm. So I was coming up on May 1st and I thought, oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna do this because I wasn't, you know, I was living alone and I was still in the same house and how was I gonna do all this? And then for some reason, I thought of this young woman 
I know, and she wouldn't mind my mentioning her name, Jasmine Manuel. Uh -huh. And I had known her, and uh, she said, uh, she had told me several months ago that she was going to have a baby. So I thought, wow, maybe this would be a good day to check up on her and see how she's coming with the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I, hadn't, I swear, I hadn't talked to her in weeks. So I called her up on the cell phone, and it was her sister answering the phone. And her sister said, uh, uh, Jasmine's kind of uh, busy right now. She's in labor. Oh, and I said, you're kidding. On May 1st. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I said, where is she? And she said, uh, she's at uh, Mad River Hospital. And I said, I'll be right there. I put on my shoes. They, they matched color that day. Yeah, I jumped good. in the car. I drove up to Mad River Hospital, and I went racing into the, uh, to the birth center. And I went up to the nurse's station, and I said, uh, and they said, can I help you? And I said, I'm here to see Jasmine. And they said, what relationship are you to her? Are you uh, Family. her grandfather? I said, no. They said, are you... Uh, related her in some way? I said, no. They said, well, just a second, let us check. And they went in and talked to her and they said, well, it's okay with her. So, so I walked oh. in and there she was, you know, her sister was there and the, and the other people were there and I just, I just sat down next to her and I, and I held her hand and I said, you have no idea what this means to me to be here. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. And she was there and she was ready to deliver. I mean, she was ready, ready. Wow. She was ready. And um, sure enough, that afternoon, May 1st, the baby came out. Sebastian oh. is his name. So then the next day, I went back and... Uh, she was there, and the baby was there, and the father was there, and uh, his mother was there, everybody was there. Yeah. And I sat next to her, and she said, here. And she just handed him over to me, and I'm holding this little thing, and he's looking up at me. And I said, man, you don't... I said, someday this little guy's going to know what this means to me. Yeah. And the funny thing, and it is funny Did when I look at it. Did you write a letter? I should do that. Mm -hmm. Because I went off that day, the rest of May 1st, and the rest of May 1st, it, with everything else that I did, was a celebration. Because I said, well, that's, the best be. thing, that's the best thing that could happen. And I've, and I've seen him since, and he's a, he's a beautiful little kid, and he's a real hell raiser, and it's, that's the way it should be. <laughs> and, uh, that's, and, but the point of that story, the point of the story is that you take control of your emotions. You, you can take control of the things that can make you sad and overwhelmed and you can say, I'm not going to let that happen. Right. That is not going to happen. You jump in the car and you go hold the hand with somebody who's going to have a baby or you do Aww. something else or you put on a, a, a bunny outfit and go <laughs> hang out with kids who are, wouldn't know what was going on. That's what you do. You don't right. let, you, you say, you know what, I'm driving this bus Ah. And you guys just sit in the back for a while because I'm driving this bus and that's and I'm going where I want to go and that's what you do, that's what you got to do and that uh, and whatever your faith is or whatever how you define your spirituality that's what it's all about yeah. is that is to take control of your own life and just do it because it could have been very easy for you to stay in that house all oh. alone and just oh man but have instead no you had. A, another birth experience. Yeah. So to speak. It was a it was a on one level it was a uh, continuation of life, a cycle yeah. of life. Yeah. But on the, on another it was a totally different level too because there I was driving up the corridor, the uh, Eureka Arcata corridor, um, thinking about other things and thinking, oh, I, got, I I hope I'm there in time. And thinking, dang, I don't even. I'm not even related to these people, and yet <laughs> that kid is going to carry around that legacy for the rest of his poor little tortured life. Well, for you, he's, <laughs> he's got a good parents' thing. day. <laughs> and why not have a good Uncle Babe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I've had coffee with her and with, and with the father, and we're great friends, and I've visited with the baby, and I've held the baby down at uh, Old Town Coffee and Chocolates, and yeah. uh, it's... It's been a great experience, and he just has no idea what it means. And, and, and she and I have this kind of a 
bond now. And we are all connected. That's exactly right. And it's all about taking uh, control of that connection and making it work for you and not letting somebody else or something else control that because because we're driving our own bus, That's not right. anybody else. And somebody else gets in your way, just just send them to the back. <laughs> get that's back in the bus. Do. That's it. <laughs> get the back. So that's 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 how I would define spirituality. Is that way? It's just and and humor for me and writing about things is another way that I've done it. Um, I write columns all the time, as you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And has your writing changed? I, the writing has has changed incredibly because I dig a little deeper. I beyond. I used to write about you know cute little things and this and that and I've just I've, I've put that aside I don't have time for that anymore I write about things that are deep and personal and it helps me sort things out and I would say that would be a good piece of advice for anybody because writing along with humor is a very spiritual thing because as you know because you were one of my students once upon a time yes absolutely. You, when you sit down and you put your thoughts in writing whether you're writing to somebody and you never mail it or you write to somebody and you do mail it right you what you do is you're putting these thoughts together and they start to make sense. Why do I feel? And put it down there. And it helps a lot. It really does. And as I said, you don't have to write for somebody specifically. You can write for yourself. And I, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful way to express yourself. And in my case, I look for uh, humor and things and storytelling and things. And after I wrote that Make My Metamucil, as you know, I went out and, and wrote two or three other plays. And they may never get performed, maybe someday, maybe not, but every one of them has taken me down a little further down the road. And I've said things that I think are important to me about other people and about myself, and that's the greatest thing about it. Absolutely. Yeah. But what about those folks that wouldn't find this so easy? Do you have any good advice for them? In terms of, you mean just Being writing specifically or just or reflecting? Reflecting personally? and being more spiritual. And getting through those tough times, learning how to drive that bus and being okay with one it. Of the thing, one of the ways it helps out is because every, a lot of people feel that way and yeah. they feel lost. And sometimes I think just connecting with somebody, and I don't mean commiserating per se, yeah. uh, because, you know, sometimes you can get caught in a trap saying, uh, well, my attorney filed a TRO and your attorney, this, you know, and I'm talking about you get into this kind of, Right. stuff and you don't want to get into that trap you want to talk about feelings and I've talked to people who have experienced loss great loss mm -hmm. as great as mine and I've talked to them and we share our own thoughts and goals and fears and we continue to do that and uh, they call me up anytime and I call them up anytime and sometimes it only takes a minute just to remind them I'm here and you're here and we're still here and by golly the blood is still flowing, <laughs> so there we go. Every day's a new day. Oh, well, Dave, thank you for oh, opening Denise. up to us. Thank you. And uh, we always look forward to your writings and your journey. Oh, it's, well, thanks, and thanks for being part of my journey. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, Dave. Okay, yes. we'll do it again. <laughs> That's okay. right. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Out Here in the Redwoods. I'm Denise Riles with Dave Silverbrand. Aloha means hello, and goodbye. See you next time.